Hey guys, thanks for joining in on another episode of Wash Wednesday, coming to you from the beaches of Nanaimo. <laughs> uh, I just want to share some things that are on my heart. Um, yeah, we'll get right to it. I'm just going to pray. Father, I thank you right now, Lord. Lord, would you just speak through me, Jesus? Open eyes, open hearts, open minds that we would comprehend the scriptures, God. Lord, I thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading and guiding us into all truth, Lord. Lord, fill my mouth with your words that they would be spirit and life that it would bring freedom to everyone watching and hearing God. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, be glorified, be magnified. Thank you that it's not about me, it's all about you. It's all about your glory and image, God, being restored upon your people, Lord. And we thank you for what you're doing in these days on the earth, God. Raise up your warriors, God. Raise up your sons and daughters. Raise up the new bride, Father, that walks in the power, the glory, the authority, and the love of God releasing heaven everywhere they go lord so father use me to train and equip your children in jesus name amen all right guys so i'm going to talk to you guys out of second corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 so i'll just read it quickly actually verse 3 it says for though we walk in the flesh we are not waging war according to the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh but have divine power to destroy strongholds we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Verse six, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. So I just felt the Lord uh, want me to speak on that today. Um, and so what happens is like Jesus paid a high price, okay? Not only to get us into heaven, but so that we can actually release heaven on earth, okay? like to. He comes and lives on the inside. And then as a believer, we're called to be believers and release heaven on earth, okay? And what, what the devil wants is if he loses you to being born again, he's lost you, right? You're not going to hell. You're going to heaven. You've been restored back to God. Here's what he's going to do. He's going to throw lies at you. He's going to throw circumstances at you. He's going to throw a bunch of stuff at you. To, and I talked about this at the last Wash Wednesday, basically to challenge your beliefs. He's going after Jesus inside of you. He doesn't want him to move forward. And specifically some ways that he does this is thoughts and different strongholds and demonic ways of thinking. If he can get you as a believer into the mind of the world, the spirit of the world, and thinking from that place, it's going to prevent you from moving forward. Okay, And that's why many are stuck they feel like they can't move forward. They feel like they need breakthrough in different areas because there's something there. There's like a wall there that's preventing them from moving forward. And I, that's kind of what I want to address. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth and he will lead us and guide us into all truth. That's the reality. That's the truth. Anything that says otherwise is a complete lie from the pit of hell. Okay. Here's the thing though. As Christians, we can actually get in the way of Holy Spirit doing his job. And what I mean by that is Holy Spirit has specific roles in our lives. He's called the comforter. He leads us and guides us into all truth. He's the advocate. Uh, and he's and he's he's the one that comes alongside of us. He's many different things to us, right? He is God himself, part of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus, the Spirit of truth. What happens is when we do his job, how do we do that? One, we can comfort ourselves. How do we do that? Well, let me tell you a story about my life. When I got born again eight years ago, I was still terrified of public speaking. It was my biggest fear. And basically what happened is through revelation of the truth, remember truth is what sets you free. I don't have to go there that much because I've talked about it before. Truth is what sets you free. Knowing the truth sets you free. The Lord revealed to my heart that I was comforting myself by not publicly speaking because it because it was very uncomfortable it was very uncomfortable for me it was terrifying I had, a, I had a fear of public speaking therefore I would avoid it what was I doing I was comforting myself and I read that the Holy Spirit's the comforter and the revelation I got was that I was comforting myself not allowing Holy Spirit to comfort me therefore disengaging the Holy Spirit from having his way in my life and when I got that revelation, I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to step into uncomfortable situations 
to allow and trust for Holy Spirit to do his job of comforting me. So what I did, I was like, I threw off that, that self comfort, that demonic comfort to preserve self. And I stepped into uncomfortable situations of public speaking. And it wasn't long where, I, and I just trusted God himself to comfort me, Holy Spirit to comfort me. He started to comfort me and I was set free from the fear of public speaking because I allowed the Holy Spirit to do his job, his role in my life. Another way, he leads us and guides us into all truth. We can get in the way of that and prevent Holy Spirit from leading and guiding us into all truth. By what? By leading and guiding ourselves into all truth. How do we do that? By leaning on our own understanding. By thinking that you have everything figured out. By thinking that your own knowledge, your own wisdom, your own experiences is enough. You don't need God necessarily. You don't need, like, you, you, you've got it all. You've got it all. And you're like, when you read the Bible, you're just coming up with your own opinions on what it says. Or everything you've been taught and you're filtering the Word of God through what you've been taught. All that stuff gets in the way of receiving pure bread from heaven, from receiving the revelation the Holy Spirit wants to release to us of the Word of God. And that revelation of the Word of God is what brings freedom into your life, okay? It's what brings freedom into your life. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Revelation means unveiling. It means uncovering. Like the book of Revelation, it's the revelation of Jesus, not the revelation of end times. It's, a, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. So revelation means unveiling, okay? The Bible says that it's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it's the glory of kings to seek it out. So God, God hides things in, in the word, not from us, but for us. He hides gold nuggets of truth in here for us, not from us, so that we can seek it out in relationship and intimacy. In a relationship with him, we go to him, God, teach me. I have no idea what this means. Teach me. And we get alone with him and we ask him. And he teaches us because he's a good father. When you ask for bread, he's not giving you a stone. The disciples, when Jesus would talk in parables, he said, I'm talking in parables because um, it's, the meaning of these things isn't for everyone. It's just for you specifically, disciples. And it says that the disciples actually had no idea what he was saying when he was sharing parables. So the disciples, it actually says that they, they got alone in private and asked Jesus what it all meant. And it says he explained everything. That's how good he is. He's so, he's so amazing. And so if you get alone with Jesus and ask him, he will teach you. He will teach you everything you need to know. Why? Because he promises to. He's given us the Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us into all truth. Truth is what sets you free. So make sure that you're allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you into all truth. And get out of the way. Don't do his job. Let him do his job, okay? So guys, yeah, back to, um, just back to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 or 3. just want to read that again. Just in tying it back to Holy Spirit leading and guiding us into all truth, okay? Because this is important that we believe, guys. We're believers. We're called to believe, okay? Really, our only enemy is really not Satan. He's cut off. He's a withering branch. Our... Our enemy is actually ourselves and unbelief. If we don't die to ourselves, that old self is actually an enemy of God. So the Bible says he's an enemy of God. So get rid of him, put him off, throw him off. He's dead, buried in the baptismal tank. Stop partnering with the old man, okay? So the other thing is, um, is unbelief and doubt and fear. Those things are your greatest enemy from preventing you from believing what God says. Okay, and there's reason to that, to that, but I won't get there yet. I won't go there yet. So 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. What does that mean? We're physical beings, but we're also spiritual beings. So our battle is not with other people. It's not with people. It's not a physical battle. We're in a spiritual battle, guys. And the weapons that we have are spiritual weapons. Verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, so not physical, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ and being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Here's the sweet thing, guys. In this uh, portion of scripture, it gives us another kind of like a ranking or a list of 
thoughts and what, th what thoughts get turned into if not dealt with by the enemy, okay? This is what it lists. It lists strongholds, and then it goes into arguments, then it goes into lofty opinions, and then thoughts. Those are the four types of thinking that is mentioned in this verse. Basically, what the devil tries to do, and I'm not trying to give him credit, I'm just, it's important that we have understanding, guys. The Bible says, in all you're getting, get understanding. My people perish for lack of knowledge. In other words, my people are destroyed because of ignorance. Okay? What you don't know will kill you, unlike the world says. Okay? So get understanding. It's important we have understanding. What's under your standing? What are you standing on? Right? It's, 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 it's structures built in your mind. It's important we have these understandings. Okay? So what, what the devil tries to put is he puts a thought in your mind. Okay? And this could be when you're a kid. It could be when you're an adult, a kid. He puts a thought in your mind and that's called a fiery dart. He shoots fiery darts at us which we are called to distinguish with a shield of faith. But if we don't, that thought, is a fire dart, comes into our mind. If that thought's not dealt with and it's entertained, it then grows into a lofty opinion. That lofty opinion then turns into an argument, then that argument turns into a stronghold. And I'm going to tell you uh, in the Greek what each of those things mean, but it's super important we deal with these things because what happens is over time, through experience, traumas, different things that happen to us in life, uh, the enemy bri uh, builds brick upon brick upon brick, demonic patterns of thinking that prevent Christ from shining through you. And you just stay in this place of being stuck your whole life. That's what he would like, but praise be to God that we don't have to live there and there's freedom for you and me and everyone else. So let's start with the first one. Thought, we'll start with, with thought because it's the first thing that happens. Basically, in the Greek, it means it's a mental perception. Specifically, an evil purpose. To cause whoever is devising evil against Christ to desist from his purpose and submit himself to Christ. That's, that's amazing. This is what it says under the Greek of thought, okay? It says um, it's a mental perception, okay? And it's an evil purpose. Specifically, an evil purpose to cause whoever is devising evil against Christ to desist from his purpose and submit himself to Christ. It's designed to prevent Christ from moving forward in your life, in and through your life. Okay? That thought, if not dealt with, turns into a lofty opinion. This is what it says about lofty opinion in the Greek. It's a presumption. It's an elevated structure. A barrier, a rampart, a bulwark. In other words, it's like a wall. It's an elevated structure. It's a wall that the, un the enemy hides behind. Okay? It's a demonic way of thinking. That's not dealt with. Turns into an argument. Which is reasoning, thinking, a conception, device, a reasoning such as is hostile to the Christian faith. An imagination. It's an imagination, okay? It's a, it's a reasoning. And reasonings, human reasonings, the Bible talks about it all over, is demonic, okay? Human reasoning is demonic. Remember when Peter said to Jesus, Jesus is like, I'm about to suffer, go uh, be killed and crucified. Right after Peter received revelation of who Jesus was, Jesus says, this, I'm about to uh, um, suffer by the hands of lawless men. And Peter's, Peter says, that will never happen, Lord. And what does Jesus say? He says, get behind me, Satan. Satan, you are being a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind on the things of man, not, not on the things of God. He rebuked Peter and called him Satan, Said because he understood that Satan was speaking through Peter. <laughs> it's demonic. Human Humanity apart from God is demonic, guys. Straight up. We're never meant to think from ourselves. We're meant to think from God, who's now inside of us, and that's why the Bible says we have the mind of Christ. So the so thought to lofty opinion to argument. Argument not dealt with turns into a stronghold. A stronghold is this, guys. A 
false argument in which a person seeks shelter. A safe place to escape reality. That's what a stronghold is. It's not a physical place, it's a place in here. If someone triggers you, you run, you hide, you freak out, you know, that fight or flight type thing. It says this about strongholds, anything on which one relies that isn't God. Of the arguments and reasonings by which a disputant endeavors to fortify his opinion and defend it against his opinion, uh, his opponent. It's straight up like a demonic structure. Demons hide behind these structures, okay? And that's why we're tormented and that's why we, have, we don't have freedom in certain areas of our lives. It's because of these demonic structures that have been set up over time through experiences, through believing lies, through those experiences, through whatever happened. And you know, people, everyone's been through something, some were worse than others, and it's terrible, and it was never God's plan for you to go through those terrible things. But God uses it, praise God, He uses it, and um, He brings freedom, He really does. And like I said, He's looking for people to believe Him. How can we believe Him? By spending time with Him. Why? Why? Because here's the thing, faith comes by hearing, and hearing through the Word of Christ. Faith doesn't come by reading, it comes by hearing. It comes by hearing His voice. In other words, it comes by receiving revelation of truth. When you receive revelation of truth, it brings freedom, okay? So, faith, you get faith by hearing. So when you hear His voice, faith arises. And in the Greek, this is what it says about faith. It says that it's, a, it, it means divine persuasion. God persuades you to believe Him. And believing Him is that you're fully uh, fully persuaded. You just completely believe God. There's no way out of it. You just believe God. Fully believing God. And that can only happen by receiving faith. Faith comes by hearing. Faith arises, which is divine persuasion in the Greek. He persuades you, because you hear Him, to believe Him. And when you believe Him, guys, the power of God is activated. It's released to you and through you. That is what the grace of God is, guys. The grace of God is the power of God. We're saved by grace through faith. So when you were in faith, it, it attracted the saving grace of God. You were in faith, saving grace of God came. And that saving grace of God came and saved you, changed you, made you whole, made you righteous and all those things. And in the same way, Colossians 2, 10-ish says, In the same way that you've received Him, so walk in Him. We're called to walk by faith. So when you walk by faith, you're attracting grace. And grace is actually what transforms you into His image. Grace is actually what empowers you to live Christ-like. This whole thing's impossible without the grace of God. The grace of God empowers you. It enables you. It's not a license to sin. It's not covering your sin. Oh, I'm, I'm only going to, I'm just going to sin anyway, so thank you for your grace, and then you go and sin again. God, thank you for your grace to sin again. I've been in that place in the past where that's demonic. That's sloppy grace. It's demonic. It's a, doctor, a demonic doctrine. The grace of God sets you free from sin. It doesn't cover your sin. It's not an excuse or a permission to sin. It sets you free from sin, guys. Okay? So, in other words, what I'm saying is when you believe God, when you believe God, it releases the power of God to you, through you, to make you Christ-like, to release heaven on earth. Satan's trying to prevent you from believing God by throwing circumstances, experiences, thoughts, lies, whatever it may be, throwing all these things at you so that you will be led astray, so that you will get into darkness. When you're in darkness, you don't know where you're going. You don't you can't see where you're going. And you just you're and that's called deception. And you're you veer off course and then you just go into more destruction. That's what the enemy wants. But that's not what's gonna happen because truth sets you free, guys. And this is what I'm trying my hardest is, is that we'd all walk in freedom, the freedom that Jesus paid for. He paid not only, like I said, for you to get to heaven, but heaven to get into you. For you to be restored back to the Father. John 17, 3. Eternal life is to know God. Not to get to heaven one day. That's part of it. Eternal life is to know God. By faith through grace, you come into right relationship with God. He makes you righteous, holy, 
without spot or blemish. And he makes you, he sees you as he sees Jesus, guys. But he wants us to believe him, believe his promises, his truth, so that we can be transformed, not just positionally, but become who he says, he, who he says we are. Actually become it here and now, who he says we are, and live that out. Okay, guys, so why do we need to deal with these things? If they're there, they prevent God from ha moving in you and through you. God can do anything if he wants to heal someone through you, even though you're believing lies, he could do that. I'm just saying it's important we know these things because they're meant, designed to prevent you from walking in breakthrough and in freedom. And so how do we deal with it? Well, just go after Jesus, look at him, stare at him. Don't go looking for the issue. Look at Jesus, look at truth. Focus on truth, not on lies. Oh, like this is all what's wrong with me. No, no, no. Look at what's been made right with you through the blood. God made you right with him. Look at that truth, that reality. And as you follow him, he will reveal and deal with certain things that need to be dealt with in your life. And when he brings things to the surface, you repent, you renounce, and you plead the blood. And then you walk and you claim your freedom and you just walk in it. You just believe it, you walk in it. So guys, it's important we get these things. It, the, the Bible says, don't be ignorant of the devil's schemes and devices. Don't be ignorant. We don't focus on the devil, we focus on Jesus, single eye, body full of light. You focus on Jesus, but don't be ignorant of how he plays. He's, he's defeated, he's under our feet, but it's important to know so that we can lead other people into freedom as well. And the Bible says like in second, uh, this second Corinthians chapter 10, that like we have divine power to pull down strongholds. We have his power, but you gotta believe to access that power. You gotta believe, okay? And so those things need to be removed. Romans 12, 2, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Pull all those demonic thinking th thought patterns down, put on the mind of Christ, think from Him, and uh, man, you will experience a freedom you've never even known possible. Thank you, Jesus. So God, guys, bless you guys. Thank you for tuning in. I love you guys. Uh, Jesus loves you so much. He's loved you with an everlasting love. If you didn't know this already, he actually died so that you could walk free, be free from self, sin, and Satan. And uh, we got to go because we're getting flooded out. God bless you guys.